Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm Vida and this is the weekly news roundup. Let's take a look at our top national and business story this week. Hun Manet leads thousands of soldiers in his first military exercise as army commander. Ministry collects more than 2 million in forest licensing and export revenue. Council of Ministers instruct Ministry to proceed with a request to conduct a study on potential sand ranging operations along major rivers. United Nations right invoice call for severe political discourse during her latest visit. Ministry of Post and Communication signs landmark digital agreement on public private partnership. China Railway Construction Corporation is set to conduct a feasibility study on improving trucks in the kingdom. We begin with our top national stories. The Royal Cambodian Army on Saturday kicked off a live fire exercise called the Golden Hanuman in Kampot Province. It is the first time a military exercise was conducted under the command of Lieutenant General Hun Manet. Lieutenant General Manet inspected troops and armor vehicles before the exercise began. During his opening speech, Lieutenant General Manet said the Golden Hanuman is important and its lesson should be implemented by soldiers. About 2,000 soldiers participated in the exercise, firing bullets and shell at various targets. In his speech, Lieutenant General Manet reiterated the army is loyal to the government, defense ministry and the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces High Command. Lieutenant General Marsupan, commander of Brigade 70 and head of the exercise committee, said the army had been rehearsing since April. He said 13 different weapons were used, along with about 13,000 ammunition and 14,000 grams of TNT. He said 13 different weapons were used, along with about 13,000 ammunition and 14,000 grams of TNT. Lieutenant General Supan said all craft high command sent members of the bodyguard unit, ME Institute, military police and other soldiers under the Defense Ministry to join the exercise. According to the Defense Ministry, Cambodia has had three similar drills. The first was in 2010, the second in 2013, while the last one was held last year. Cambodia also hold annual military exercises with foreign countries such as China and the United States. However, training with the US was halted due to strained relations. An Agriculture Ministry report published late last month showed the ministry has collected more than $2 million in forestry revenue during the first three months of this year. According to the report, a total of $2.3 million in real and $69,281 in licensing and export revenue were collected. Last year, the ministry collected more than $4.5 million in forestry revenue. Forestry activist Heinz Roth said he was happy the ministry was able to rack in a huge amount so far this year. However, Mr. Roth said some companies still conduct illegal locking, which is an act that deprives the state of revenue. According to his observation, the amount of revenue collected by the ministry was disproportionate to the number of trees cut down through locking. Mr. Sroth said the government must strictly monitor companies allowed to lock and export wood and protect the forest by cracking down more on crimes. The Council of Ministers has instructed the Water Resources Ministry to proceed with a request made by 3 pip Engineering and Construction. The request was made in order to conduct a study on the availability of a sand ranging operations along the banks of the Mekong and Basa rivers. Chiriya Sokchanda, Secretary of State of the Council of Ministers, said the company offered to restore and build an embankment in exchange for a sand ranging operation. It is not clear which parts of the rivers will be affected, but the directive noted the company aims to conduct operations beginning in Kandal's province on Sonor checkpoint until Kampung Cham and Krati provinces. Mr. Sokchana said in the directive that Water Resources Minister Lam Kien Hao is to discuss the study with related institutions. 3 pf Engineering Constructions earlier made a request to Prime Minister Hun Sen to sanction the study. The study was approved by Mr. Hun Sen on May 1st despite opposition by NGOs. Son Jae, Executive Director of the Affiliated Network for Social Accountability, said sand ranging is an issue that affects villagers and the environment, adding that the government should find other means. 
He noted that the Mines and Energy Ministry always downplays the impacts of sand dredging, and operators tend to neglect technical aspects and only focus on benefits. Ned Petra, spokesman for the Environment Ministry, said the government will only consider an operation license for three pip engineering and constructions after feedback from the ministries. Mr. Petra noted that the government has not yet given the company permission. Rona Smith, the UN Special Reporter on Human Rights in Cambodia, has wrapped up her visit to the kingdom by highlighting changes the government must make to improve human rights and political freedom. During a press conference, Ms. Smith said there have been improvements, but more are needed. She said she saw improvements in political rights, but she is concerned that pressures on former members of the dissolved CNRP appears to continue unabated. She said she was aware the courts have convicted at least six former opposition members and supporters since her last visit, noting that about 80 former CNRP are facing intimidation. In previous statement, Ms. Smith called on the government to review the law on political parties and various electoral laws in a bid to bring them in line with international standards. Ms. Smith also again called for the release of former opposition leader Gam Sukha, who is currently on bail under court supervision. She said the investigation into Mr. Sukhar treason case should be concluded or the charges dropped. Government spokesman Pai Sipan responded by reiterating that the government cannot interfere in the court proceedings. Mr. Sipan said Ms. Smith should instead recognize political stability and social security in the kingdom. Regarding the CNRP, Mr. Sipan said Ms. Smith placed her concern in the wrong direction. He said the group incited people to cause social unrest, discrimination against other races, and protested against the government rather than sitting down and figure out solutions. Former opposition party lawmaker U Chan Rod said Ms. Smith accurately described Cambodia's political situation. Mr. Chan Rod said the government should end the political prosecution and make more improvements as recommended. On to our top business stories. The Ministry of Post and Telecommunications signed a memorandum of understanding with conglomerate Royal Group to boost digital transformation. The agreement was signed at the Ministry between Secretary of State Sok Puthiwut and Royal Group Chairman Kat Ming. The Minister of Telecommunications Tram Il Tuk attended the ceremony. Mr. Puthiwut said the public-private partnership model will serve as a model for future collaborations with the private sector. He said the government focuses mainly on building the policy framework and regulations as well as development e-government applications, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things technologies, strengthening cyber securities and building an ICT innovation center and a cloud data center. In Watson, CEO of Cellcard said Royal Group has been at the forefront of ICT development and investment in Cambodia for the past 23 years. Mr. Watson said the move represents one of the most significant and far-reaching memorandums to be signed in Cambodia. A team from China Railway Constructions Corporation is now in Cambodia and will soon begin a feasibility study on improving the kingdom's railroads. CRCC visits follow Prime Minister Hun Sen's request to the company asking it to help make the local railway system more efficient. Mr. Hun Sen made his request two weeks ago during the Bell and Road Initiative Forum in Beijing. Leading his company delegation, Vice President Wang Wenchong met with Transport Minister Sun Chan Thol in Phnom Penh. Mr. Wang announced that the company will be carrying out additional studies on a monorail and a subway project to improve public transportation in the capital, according to a Transport Ministry statement. Ministry spokesman Vasam Soraya said there are now 18 Chinese experts here are working with Cambodia officials to collect data. The government also requested CRCC to prepare a feasibility study for a new rail line connecting Siem Reap and Serai Sopon district in Banti Minche province. Cambodia now has two rail lines, the southern line connecting Phnom Penh and Sayan Uwil and the northern one linking the capital with Boi Pad. This is all for this week. Join us again for another edition of the Weekly News Roundup. I'm Vida. Have a good weekend.